all right guys sorry i'm not there again uh but we do want to continue on with uh our statistics information here so we're going to do uh two things today we're going to talk about the type of distributions we've already looked at our, our graphs types our uh, dot and box plots so we're going to talk about how do we analyze these and get some information from them so the first thing we're talking about is a type of distribution there's two different types the first one is a uh, symmetrical distribution, and that kind of looks like uh, a nice hill, right? Right down the middle, where one side of it is the same as the other side, or pretty close to it. So it kind of just looks like a nice rounded hill, and you can almost cut it in half of the line, all right? Um, and in this instance, the mean, the median, and the mode are very close to being the same number. Okay, uh, the highest point on this uh, graph here would be the mode, because that's the most numbers. Um, the mean would be about the middle, and the median is now in the middle. The other two types are both skewed. That means the data is more pushed either to the left or to the right of the middle. Okay, so um, if we look at a left skewed, this one has a tail on the left side. So you can see that it starts to tail off to the left. And what happens is the mode is now, the high point of the, of the graph is off to the right. The middle of the data gets pushed a little bit to the right, but the mean is going to stay kind of still in the middle. Okay. Um, so this would mean that the mean is the smallest, the median is a little bit bigger than the mean, and then the mode is the greatest. Uh, number there, the greatest number. Um, and if we go skew to the right, so now the data pushes, uh, actually moves to the right, but the tail shifts to the right here. Okay, so now once again, the means in the middle, the median moves a little bit to the left, and uh, the mode shifts to the left as well. Right, the t the t high point here is where the mode's going to be, and the mean stays right about in the middle of our data here. So. The mean doesn't move that much. The median shifts. Um, so now the mean is the biggest. Okay, remember, zero is over here. 100 would be some over here, maybe. All right. Um, then the median, and then the smallest would be the mode. Okay. Um, so for its symmetrical distributions, the mean is the appropriate choice for picking. And if you're skewed, um, you want to pick the median. Uh, and this would describe a typical number. So uh, just keep that in mind that as we shift the graph to the left or to the right here, okay, most of the values are shifting, if it's skewed and the tails on the right, are shifting to the left. So the, this, in this case, the median, right, the median number is going to represent a more typical number than the mean, which is off to the right. Most of the data is falling in this area. We want to pick a number that's a little more centralized to that one. And the same thing if we're left skewed, is the tails on the left, all the data shifts over to the right. The median is a better representation of most of the numbers. And if it's right down the middle, then we want to pick the mean, right, which represents the symbol X bar in your calculator, okay, because um, that's right in the middle or halfway through here, okay? So remember, uh, the tail goes to the left if we're skewed left. The tail goes to the right if we're skewed to the right. Okay, so it's kind of opposite. If we skew right, most of the data is actually on the left. And if we skew left, most of the data is on the right. Um, so we'll just keep that in mind. All right. So, and identify and which is the best description. So here you can see if we draw our curve. This is skewed to the right. Okay, so this is. Uh, skew right all right and in this case the median is going to be the better value all right and instead of writing that out we're going to type it okay so this is skew right and the median value is the best picture okay uh, the second one here, right, this one is going to be almost right down the middle. So this one is symmetric. And we want to pick the mean for this one. 
Okay. You can see the tail here is on the left side. So this is skewed to the left. Okay. And we want to pick the median again. Now remember the tail tells us left or right. Okay, there's a couple more. Try these ones first. So pause it here, try it, and we'll take a look at the answer here, all right? All right, so taking a look at the first one. Remember the tails here is on the left side. So this is skewed to the left, okay? And the median would be the more appropriate choice, all right? Remember skewed to the left just means the data has shifted, okay? That it's stretching out to the left here, but the data is actually on the right-hand side, all right? Um, the second one, same thing, tail to the right, so this is skewed right, okay? And the median is the better representation of the, uh, just a general um, description of a typical value, okay? And, oh, last but not least, we have a symmetrical, and we would want to pick the mean here, okay? So same thing, I'm right, going to go take a look at this one. So if this were... Uh, a symmetrical the high point here is in the middle you can see it's actually over here on the right and so we get something that looks kind of like this so this is skewed okay and remember the tail is stretching to the left okay so this is skewed left all right um the relationship here would mean remember the mean is in here so the mean is to the smallest followed by the median and then followed by the mode, which is going to be the biggest. Okay, you can see the mode way over here. All right, biggest number. And we would want to pick uh, the median best represents a typical value. All right. So if we were just a, um, you can see the same thing going on here. Okay, stretching off. And this tail is extending to the right. So this is skewed. I'm going to say skew to the right, okay, which means the mode is going to be the smallest followed by the median and the mean. So the mean is actually the biggest, okay. We want to start with the smallest here. The mode is less than the median, which is less than the mean. Mode's the smallest, median's next, all right, and then followed by the mean here. We'll shift this up right here, all right. And this would represent, this would mean that the median represents the typical value from the graph. All right. Okay. We can do the same thing with box plots here, right? So we would expect to see for a symmetric box plot that this line is going to be right in the middle here. My box is going to be pretty evenly spaced. And you can see that it's actually kind of representing like the most numbers are over here, and then I'm stretching out in that direction. So this box, the tail of it, right, is stretching to the, the right, okay? So this is skewed to the right, which means that the mode is going to be the smallest, followed by the median, and then the mean is going to be the biggest, okay? And that we would want to use the median to best represent a typical value. Okay, that's the type of, of uh, distributions we're talking about. The next thing we're going to talk about is what's called a frequency table or a histogram. Um, and so... All we're doing with a frequency table is essentially just recording the number of uh, entries there are. Okay, We have to essentially come up with um, an interval to count these over. All right, And we're going to make what's called a, a frequency table, and it will do a cumulative frequency as well. We're going to get rid of this cumulative here. We're just going to do a frequency table and then a histogram. Okay. And then we'll also look at how to do this on the calculator. So if you don't have a calculator, go get one. Pause it. Go get one. Um, if the teacher randomly sees all you guys stand up at once and you get it, it'd be kind of funny. So, all right. Uh, so what we're going to do is we need to decide what the intervals are going to be. Now, the intervals are the certain numbers you're going to count between. So um, you can see with all my 20 values here, right, I want to break these up into certain uh, amounts. 
So maybe if we count by like fives, I'm going to record all the numbers that fall within a, a range of five numbers, and then we'll space those out. So how many numbers are between, you know, let's say like 20 and 25, 25 and 30, and so on and so forth. But you got to remember, I only have, okay, a number of limited spaces to use. I only have six spaces. So what I really want to do is figure out the range of values here. What's the biggest number? What's the smallest number? What can we count by here? And so if you look through our data here, right, the smallest number is 19, okay? And it looks like the biggest number is 62. And so if I subtract 62 and 19, this will kind of give me the range of values. How many between the biggest and the smallest here? Uh, we're going to need to borrow. So there's 30, there's 43 numbers. So I have six intervals. So if I take 43 and divide it by 6, I get just over 7. It's like 7 point, you know, uh, 1, 0 or so. Uh, it's like 7.16 repeating. So I can't count by 7s. can't go an interval by 7s uh, because they won't have enough room. Um, so I want to count a little bit more than 7s. We'll count by maybe... Um, eights, nines, tens, whatever we want to do that's going to make it kind of easy for ourselves. So why don't we uh, why don't we count by tens? Nice easy number to use. All right. And so we need to figure out where we're going to start our interval. So I'm counting by tens. I actually want to start at the number 10. And I'm going to go all the way up to 19. Why not 20, you ask? Because if I start at 10 and I count to 20, I'm actually counting 11 numbers. You count it, right? 10 counts. Then so count 10, that's 1, and 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. When you're normally counting, you don't count 0, right? You just start at 1, 2. But here we are counting the 0. We're counting 10, and then we're increasing from there. So it's always 1 less than you kind of think in the interval. So the next interval is going to be 20, right, to 29, and then 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, and then 60 to 69. Now, you could have counted by eights. We could have started at like 19 and just gone up by eights from there. Um, it's like 19 to 26, right? It gets a little tougher at that point. You might make some errors. So sometimes just picking a nice rounded number like 10 is a pretty good idea. Now, notice we aren't counting zero. So we have to take that new effect in our graph here. And I'm going to go through and just tally up um, my numbers, okay? So I'm going to go look for all the numbers between uh, 10 and 19. And I can see there's a 19 here. I'm going to cross it out as I go along. And there's one tally, one frequency. Okay. Now that all the numbers between 20 and 27. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 here. And so I would make 8 tallies. And I'd write 8 in the frequency. 30 to 39, there's 1, right? Kind of going along here. Okay, 2, 3, 4, 5. 40 to 49, I got 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't have any's in the 50s, so I leave the tally blank, and I put a 0 here. And then for 60 to 69, we have 60 and 62. So we have 2 and 2. Now, here's the deal. Okay, In the frequency, this these numbers should all add up to 20. Okay, Because I know there's 20 students. So we're just going to check it. 1 and 8 is 9, 14, 18. And there is indeed 20 in there when I add them all together. So I, I got a pretty good idea that I got them all. Okay. And now we're going to do our histogram. Now, histogram is basically a bar graph, except um, the bars are going to touch. Okay. So we already did the first part here. We chose a scale. Okay. Um, we split them into e e even intervals. All right. We need to label our axes. We need to title it. And we're going to draw our bars. And remember, the height of the bar is actually the frequency, and our bars are going to touch. Histogram, bar graph, is touch. So. I'm going to get rid of this just so I have a little bit of room here, okay? I hope you guys see kind of how we uh, figured out what to count by. Um, I used the range of numbers divided by the number of intervals I have, and that helped me figure out 
um, how many I could count by here. So I'm starting not at zero, but at 10. So I'm going to actually skip a little space and I start my first interval here, but I need a break. We need to draw our little lightning bolt here, okay? For a break indicating that I'm skipping numbers. Um, they're there, I'm just not going to reference them here. And I'm going to not go like every bar, I'm going to go about every three. So this first interval represents all the numbers from 10 to 19. Then I'm going to go three more, okay? Uh, remember, I'm not leaving a space in between, so I'm not like, here's my one interval, and then I'm skipping this space. Nope, we are starting right after that one ends. Okay, this is 20 to 29. And if you don't have a lot of room like this, maybe the graph's not big enough, um, you can always go down below here if you need to. Okay, three, so here's 30 to 39, and um, there's 40 to 49, 50 to 59. 60 to 69. So actually, what I could do, and just leave yours if you want, but I could uh, actually open up and count instead of my threes here, just so I have a little more room, I can actually count by fours. So if you count it by threes, don't go erasing everything, just keep it going. I'll catch up to you in a second here. Okay, so we're skipping that, and we're going to go over four. One, two, three, four. So this, once again, this is 10 to 19. It's just easier for me to write, so I'm just Expanding over so I can fit them all in here with my stylus. Fun. All right, you guys finish up here. I'm going to pause it so it looks like magic. And boom. Okay, now the key thing here is make sure these are evenly spaced. So I can't count by like fours, fours, fours and get stuck with the three at the end. It doesn't work. Okay, now this axis represents the interval, the ages. So we're going to put down our interval, which we said was ages. Okay. And then this other side over here represents our frequency. And we're going from 0 all the way to 8. So here I can just count by 1s. Uh, I'll count by 2s and skip 1. But this is really 1, 2, skip 3, 4, skip 5, list 6, skip 7, list 8. And I can stop there. Okay? And so now we're just going to fill in the bars. So for the first tally from 10 to 19, I have 1. So I'm going to go ahead and fill the bar in. Uh, for one, I'm going to correctly fill it in though, uh, if it'll let me here. Okay, starting from the, the interval starts and ends. Then it goes all the way up to eight. So I'm going to go all the way up, continuing down. Then I'm going to go to five. So from that bar, and then remember these bars are touching. Okay, four, zero. So I'm not going to put anything down. And then I'm going to go to two. And then we can kind of shade these in. Okay. And there we go. All right. And we can just put down frequency histogram as our title. All right. And uh, normally you might either that or you can put down, um, if there isn't a title, here we have like ages of students. Um, so we could put down ages of students at the top if you want to. Um, title. And there is your histogram. Now, a cumulative frequency histogram, we would essentially total as we go down. So, for example, if I was doing this, this first one has 1. Then I add 8 to that and get 9. Add uh, 5 to that and get 14. Then I add 4 to that and get 18. I add 0 to that and get 18 and then end up with 20, which is the total. So in a frequency histogram, my bars are basically gonna continue to increase here. So I would go like one, right, up to nine, and then up to 14, okay, up to 18, then I'll stay at 18 for the next one, and then I would jump up to 20. So that would look like if I did a, a cumulative frequency histogram. Um, on the next page, we have another example of a histogram here. So um, I'm going to let you guys try this one on your own. We have 30 people. So we have, remember, it goes to smallest to biggest. We go, I got up to 15. So you have some room here. Uh, we have about one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't have to use all six intervals. Um, but just keep in mind, we're going from 0 to 16. So if we, or 15, right? So if we divide that by 6, 
what is it approximately going to come out to? Right, it's uh, two and, and change, so maybe we count by threes. So zero to three, right? Oh, I did it. Zero to three is how many numbers? Zero, one, it's four numbers. So it's got to be zero to two, three, four, five, right? Six, seven, eight, and then nine, 10, 11. 10, 11, 12, and then 13, 14, 15, and then it gets exactly on the money there. Okay, so it's actually uh, good we kind of took a look at that when we, when we did this, okay? Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and do our tailies. So from zero, uh, go through and fill these in. Here's your frequency, and then you guys are gonna go ahead and, and fill that in for yourselves, okay? Um, on the next one, same thing, histogram. Here we're gonna identify skewed and, and not, okay? And that's it, and I'll leave you guys with this. I'll see you tomorrow, the homework tonight, finish up the worksheet, and hopefully you guys have a good night, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.